Hi everyone, uh, this is Asim here. So today we're gonna start with a series of videos focusing on cyber security. Uh, it would be the videos would range from basic to advanced. So basic being like bypassing client side checks and advanced maybe advanced are like Windows hijacking as well as uh, USB hijacking, um, bad USB attacks and similar kind of stuff. So uh, I, I suppose any video should have a what, why and how of that. So since I've already discussed the what part, so let's come to the why part. So why, uh, I mean why not, I mean why this video is made. So it happened like I started learning about cyber security around 10 to 11 years ago. So at that time there wasn't any easy to learn resources like uh, Udemy and Coursera and other online platforms where you could go and do a course and get a fair enough knowledge about the subject. But even though these are available now, I don't suppose that uh, you could become a pro at any of anything like so anything that requires patience, persistence and diligence and specifically cyber security. It takes time to cultivate those skills to get into the habit of doing things the way it, these are being done. So yeah, so uh, a lot of people and uh, usually my friends have asked me uh, how to get started with hacking and all those stuff. So I've, I've recommended a few sites and videos as well so that they could start. But eventually they had it, they had discarded that you know, in two weeks or maybe in a month. So then mostly it was not because that the you know, resource I pointed to them was not good. It was mostly because of two reasons. The first being that the sources had to comply by the legal laws as anywhere else. So they had to do all the uh, like practical hacking thing in a simulated environment. So simulated environment doesn't give the thrill as uh, hacking a real website would give. That, that's true, I agree. And the second being uh, that, okay, I've done enough uh, fun. Let's now focus on something that could help me earn my bread and butter. So, uh, uh, so I would uh, tackle these points one by one. So coming to the how part, like how how this video would would be structured, and that would give an answer to these questions as well. So, so the first question is being that you know, working in a simulator environment doesn't give the thrill. I agree. And the second question being that uh, that it won't help me earn my bread and butter. So. Come on man, I, I'm myself a security engineer and I'm earning myself due to the skills that I've earned in the last 10, 11 years or any cyber security skills, that's, that's all because that's the reason I have this job right now. Okay, so uh, what if I told you like there's one solution to solve them all? So I, I'm talking about like bug bounty programs and similar kind of stuff. These are programs run by organizations, private organizations as well as government organizations where they reward you or they give you swag or they add you in their hall of fame as a recognition to the skills to the time you invested in uh, hacking their website and a uh, website or product or any kind of stuff so so as to make them more secure so they usually have a terms and conditions usually being that you don't do any malicious activity when you are in their turf like if you have penetrated their product or a website or if you have got any unauthorized access you immediately report it to them so that there is no harm being done so it, it gives a good feeling like uh, like i had I had digilocker in my second year in college and eventually i worked with the government organization that was handling that and uh, so it was very smooth and eventually they added me to the to the Hall of Fame, they created a Hall of Fame, and if if I if I can show you, let let me show you that. So, community contribution. So you could see, and this is my profile. So I would like. That. So it was the first time they were doing something. So. So coming back, so, so this was a great contribution because it helped uh, them secure documents of billions of Indian citizens. So that was a, that's a good feeling that you get when you uh, when you do something, your skills are being used for doing something good. Uh, there are also monetary awards like people who are getting bounties all day every day. You could see on bug bounty platforms like Bug Crowd and Hacker One. So I also got a recent bounty that wasn't on this platform, but it was a gaming company, an Indian gaming company. I got access to the source code and a lot of critical thing that if people with malicious intent would have got, then they could have like, there would be serious revenue loss and a lot of things. 
so but i reported them uh, in a responsible manner so they, they were happy with it. this video is a bit long because i had to like give this intro and stuff so moving on there would be two parts of the video so the first part would be uh, where i would show you the way uh, we would learn with basic skills like um, practicing on the simulator environment in the second half i would try to show some of the the hacks that have been based on the concept that we have learned in the simulator environment so the hacks that that's being done in a real environment like suppose a client side bypass then i would try to show a, a original client side bypass if there is a bug bounty of that kind or there is a report on bug on that thing so let's come back to my desktop so uh, this is a website hack this site which i have recommended to a lot of people so this has a simulator environment and there are basically challenges realistic missions basic missions and a lot of other stuff so so hack this site is a free safe and legal training ground so when i started 10 11 years ago it was also it was then also it was the same it's still the same there hasn't been any difference the login is required so if you are a new user, you could go on and register their details. You could take username, passphrase, confirm passphrase, and all these things. Then when you register, you get a mail and the usual registration stuff. So since I've already done this, so let me fill this. So I used LastPass, so I got automatically fit. So let's start with this. I think I had it registered. Oh yeah, see, settings logout. So I had so going to the basic mission. So the basic test of your skills to see if you can do any of these requirements are HTML. So I think probably people. So HTML is basic uh, the basic building block of any website. Any website it's stands for hypertext markup language. So suppose if I show you the source code of this website uh, view page source so this html this is html so the whole page would start with an html tag most of the case and end with an html tag so, so as you could see here so yeah so, okay so there is something html examples huh? so it's a good website w3 schools i did i did html css and javascript when i and I was about to join college, so I did it that time. It's it's a good website. Yeah, I totally recommend this. You could start here and just like paste title two and just you could see. Uh, this is heading two. So you could see it live running. So it, it the feedback is very fast, so it's good. Okay, so let's start with the basic mission. I think if it's not visible. This level is what we call the idiot test. If you can't complete it, don't give up on learning all you can, but don't go back and now. Get you hated, made fun. I end the bus or you can continue. If you have no idea, you must learn HTML. Oh, it's the same link that I saw. So everyone recommends this website. This is a very good website. The world's largest web developer. So it, it gives a hint that it's very easy and also it has something to do with HTML. So let's check the source code. Okay, so uh, one more thing, control you, you could just press control you on your keyboard and it, it's a bit faster. So uh, let me zoom out here so that. Okay. So there is something, these things, green. So let's search for password because. Yeah, I have to enter password right. So the first few levels are extremely easy. Password is 480. So okay, we got the password, but why wasn't this being displayed on the screen itself? Is this is it is it something special? Let's Google it. So okay. So uh, HTML okay. So what, what this stands for is like these are usually comment tags. Uh, uh, I think if I show you here, HTML comment tags. So uh, an HTML comment begins with E and ends with this. So this is like, okay, let's go under the, so anything written in this are not displayed in the browser and that's why we don't see it here. So the password is this. 
formalizations we have successfully completed this. so not to make this video too long and so uh, i would like to focus on what we have learned it here so what we saw here in this basic mission was that if there are things that could be hidden in the source code of the website which could be like which could be juicy information like like in this case it was a password but what if uh, like there was some so what if there are something secret hidden into it secret could be like api keys and all so if if you don't have a concept of api keys what are api keys so api keys are basically used to access some uh, protected resources on some web server usually these are some resources that you get access to when you have an account on that web service like suppose if there would be an api key for a google service or gmail service or a mail account so that api key would be able to access your email account through a script itself you don't have to manually log in because you would have the code it's like a password but you don't have to do all the logging stuff coming to a second part let, let me show you some real hack that has been done due to like uh, something hidden in the browser itself or in the comment of in comment or it could be anything that was in the source code itself so due to some source code source code and disclosure so let let's move on to that so we saw how uh, storing or hard coding sensitive credentials or information into the client facing application led to the leakage of passwords but uh, just to uh, iterate like just to see a real world application of that I have figured out three articles which I would like to show you so coming to my browser so these are not uh, in the HTML files as is, but these are into J JS files, which are also part of the uh, website. Like JS files are the JavaScript files. So these hard coded credentials or API keys or any sensitive information could be in any of these files, like in HTML files, in JavaScript files, and in CSS files as well. So any anything that's being sent to the client, if that contains something sensitive information, then that's a potential risk. So like this is an article where the person finds some sensitive information in hard coded in JavaScript, which as you can see in the if you would I would I would have the link in the description as well. So if you uh, just skipping skimming through the content, so if you would see that the person could get uh, when he downloaded the JS files in the newly created the company it contained the company profile information and the user who placed a bit. So if we zoom in this, so he did say so he got some JS files and the map files. Map files are basically when the JS files are compressed, they need to have a map so that the browser can like successfully render the JS file and decode it. Some somewhat on the lines of that. So uh, as the researcher continues, uh, after confirming the vulnerability, I filed a report. I filed a report between three hours. The is issue was fixed and awarded by the team. So. As you can see, and this is a this is a recent bug. So since we don't have access to this report, um, we we can go by the screenshot. The second one is this one. So Swift type key stored in so this was reported on twenty eighth August twenty nineteen to Neuralic dot com. So it's a subdomain learn dot. So Neuralic is a very uh, is a big company it provides cloud based solutions to companies to improve the performance of their websites. So mm, this researcher says that he found a publicly accessible JavaScript files uh, while crawling through the third party solution set type, uh, which Neuralic was using for crawling or searching sessions. That there he found a Swift type library dot js which could help which could uh, ultimately create edit or destroy engines so it, it, it could have been a destructive thing as mentioned in the report so it could be used to create edit delete and any crud operations on domain for crawling as well as document types and also all the search analytics so this guy reported it um, two years ago as nearly acknowledges this bug they also mentioned that is in scope for submissions but is ex explicitly out of scope for paid bounties so since the subdomain mentioned here the learn.neuralic.com was out of scope for paid um, bounty so this guy didn't receive a paid bounty but nevertheless uh, he got a reputation reputation basically is the points that you get like hey, this guy has one or two reputation so 
Yeah, this is the second one, and the third one is an article about what um, why sh you shouldn't store sensitive data. So you could easily find like people using where API key equal to this. So in most of the cases, these are uh, what like Google Maps key or something similar key, which are not very destructive or more, more or less. They also have restricted usage, so you cannot abuse that. But even though uh, there, I have found some places where people are using like. Uh, commenting out the old credential or a uh, credential or as in like logging credentials to the web panel it, it is mostly seen in uh, devices where the web panel also has sub commented out code that code could be easily used to access like sensitive dashboards so that's it for today i guess uh, moreover i yeah, it, it's my first attempt on the video so i know that there, there, there's a lot of thing that needs to be done there, there's a lot of improvement that could be done and your feedback would be invaluable so please and like the video just just give any feedback whatever you feel like however it was the video was long when yeah moving forward i i may i share that the video can video would be shorter this in this video we could only cover one of the basic missions because there was a long uh, pep talk in the start so uh, next time we will try to cover more of the technical parts and we will try to cover two or three missions and so that we could learn a lot I try to find more uh, reports and real bug paid and try to explain more so please give give a valuable feedback and after the screen changes there would be a QR code so if you scan the QR code it would uh, uh, redirect you to a Google form so if you feel like like giving a detailed feedback you could do that so thank you.